up holy hands and worship the Lord. Lord, you're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Come on and give him praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
precious Jesus. God is holy. In his sanctuary is holy. In our lives he's holy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come, in your strength and your power come in thy name lift up those hands and sing it to the lord the great and awesome God in our midst. Send the precious anointing upon all of us as we wait upon you for the breaking of your words. Not by might nor by power, but by your precious Holy Spirit. Let a broken heart be mended. Let a sick body be healed. Let a burdened soul be delivered. Let a lost soul be saved. Let a backslider find a way back home. Let every saint be strengthened. We pray in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 21. Mark chapter 11. And Luther chapter 19. All these three apostles record an event that was very significant. It is called the triumphal entry. As our Lord prepared what is called Passion Week, the week of passion. He now prepares himself for the countdown to Calvary. Now, there are a number of things that he did preceding Calvary. Among them he had with his disciples the Last Supper, which we call the Lord's Supper. 
And he said to them at one point, I will no longer or no more eat with you and drink with you until it be in my father's kingdom. And so Jesus Christ who became the great model sufferer Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that he being the captain of our salvation was made perfect by the things which he suffered and sometimes we try to avoid or evade suffering but it is an intimate part of the Christian journey Paul himself makes the, the expressions when he writes for if we suffer with him we shall also reign with him there is a phrase that is commonly used no cross no crown no sweat no sweets no pains no gains and so all of us who are part of this triumphant army must remind ourselves that along this journey sometimes you have to cry sometimes you have to sigh sometimes as our Lord Jesus Christ said, let this pass from me. Sometimes you want it to pass from you. But there's no way it's going to pass. Because if it passes, you will not get the kind of reward and results that you need. And so we want to Strengthen our resolve because the battle must be won. And it's not going to be won for us by our neighbors or our friends. It's going to be won by us for ourselves. Touch yourself and tell you it is me for me. Well, you didn't say that convincingly. Oh yes, you're not fighting this battle in this warfare for me, you're fighting it for yourself. Fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Oh praise God. And so I will look at the portion from Matthew. I did say Matthew 21, 1 through 11. Mark 11. 1 through 11, Luke 19, 29 to 39. All three apostles record the triumphal entry. Matthew uses these words. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway he shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say anything unto you, he shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and the colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. And brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes. 
and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and trod them in the way. And the multitude that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, in all of this reading, I want to extract a text from verse 3. And verse 3 of Matthew 21 would be the equivalent to verse 3 of Mark 11 and the equivalent verse 31 of, Mat of Luke 19. So Matthew 3, Mark, Matthew 21, 3, Mark 11, 3, Luke 19, 3. All these apostles points out why the ass and the coal should be loosed and be taken to Jesus. Simply because the Lord needed them. And today I want to remind us that we are needed for service. Touch you and tell you I am needed for service. Oh, praise God. Now touch your neighbor and tell him, it's not only me. You are also needed for service. Oh, hallelujah. As I said earlier, these steps that led to Calvary were very important in the life of Jesus Christ. And as a result, they marked also very important steps for us. Because if he had not gone to Calvary, if he had not paid the price in full, then there's no way you and I could be here today rejoicing and praising God, saying that our sins have been forgiven. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And this very significant thing, because here it was, the scripture says in, amen, in the book of St. John 1, 11 and 12, he said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. When he came initially, they failed to receive or to accept him as the promised Messiah, because of the meek and lowly, and might I say the humble way in which he came. Nevertheless, he is the Messiah. Having rejected him then, the time came when the scriptures must be fulfilled. Oh, you're not with me? And here is one particular time that the scripture had to be fulfilled. What scripture? Well, we read it in Matthew here. Matthew spoke of the prophecy that must be fulfilled. Come on, somebody. The king riding upon an ass. Go tell the daughters of Zion, chapter 5. Amen. Thy king cometh unto thee, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass. This is prophecy being fulfilled. Come on, somebody. And at this particular time, all the multitude that followed when the question was asked who is this in verse number 10 they had no hesitation they had no reservation they immediately proclaimed 
who he was indeed. Come on, somebody. This is Jesus. Oh, praise God. This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Come on, somebody. Now, this was the same Jesus who, amen, they rejected because of the lowly birth. But those who reject us now, it's only a matter of time. They will have to accept us. Oh, you're not with me. Because you can only reject the truth but for a while. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. My old late grandmother would say, don't try to bury the truth. For wherever you bury the truth, it's going to be raised up. Don't try to drown the truth because the truth will swim like oil. It will not stay under. It's going to come up. Somebody praise God. There are some of us who were rejected when we declare that we are now children of God. We were given one week. Some were given a little longer, maybe one month. Others might have been given one year. Come on, somebody. Because some folks just could not see how you are going to live the Christian life. But thank God, amen, your week has come and gone. And you are still saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Your month has come and gone. And you are still saying, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Your hair has come and gone. And you are still wrapped up and tied up and tangled up with Jesus Christ. And your weeks and your months and your years, for others they have turned into many years. And you are still saying, the longer I serve him. Oh God, am I talking to anybody here? He's the sweeter he grows. And the more I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven. My heart overflows. Touch somebody and tell them I still feel like serving him. Oh God Almighty. Trouble on every hand. But I feel like pressing on. Because I come thus far. I found fault with pastor. I found fault with choir members. I found fault with musicians. I found fault with prayer mothers. I found fault with brethren. But I come thus far and I find no fault in Jesus. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen, somebody. And as much as I love everybody in the church, my greatest example is Jesus. Oh, you're not with me, you're not with me, you're not with me. So even when the pastor disappoints me, I still feel like traveling on. Even when the ministers disappoint me, I still feel like when the musician miss the keys and mess up the service, I still feel. Hallelujah. Well, our musicians don't get messed up very often. Thank God for that, but I still feel like traveling on. When the audio control mess up the sound and you can't hear me properly, you still feel like traveling on because sometimes you can't hear me, but I guess you can feel me. Come on, somebody. There is a connection. Jeremiah says like fire. Anybody got any fire down there? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So in all of these, we're still going on. Jesus said, I'm going. And the people had to hail him. Those who rejected him then, that's where I came from. They accepted him now. Come on, somebody. Some of us who did not get the approval of our relatives to serve God, we got it now. Some of who did not get any respects. Oh, you're not with me. 
We did not get any respect when we started out. But thank God you are respected now. To the point of they be, they're asking you to pray for them. Pray with them. Are oh, you not with me somebody? Hallelujah. It's only a matter of time. He who suffers now will reign tomorrow. Touch your neighbor and tell them wait for you tomorrow. God of heaven. Wait for you tomorrow. Wait for you tomorrow. Do not blight your tomorrow because of today. Come on somebody. Let today pass by and give your tomorrow a chance. Let's get to the message. Hallelujah. This was an important event. Amen. And we have found out that this triumphal entry was Jesus's, can I call it his final celebration among men. The crowning glory where they say, yes, this is he. This is the prophet. Come on, somebody. It was, it was grand coronation. It was such a grand occasion that, amen, they took off their clothes. They laid them in the streets. They said, come on, donkey, walk on them. You are carrying the king of kings. You are carrying the Lord of lords. Ride on them, walk on them. Come on, somebody. His enemies became his footstool. Because those who had rejected him now laid their garments in the street and say, walk on them, donkey. Carry Jesus on them. God, am I talking to anybody here? You, you know, you got to hold on until. You got to learn to wait until. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what I want to major on for the next few moments is that we are needed for service. Come on, somebody. Jesus needed to go in, and he needed someone or something to provide a service. Oh, praise God. Are you not with me? He needed someone or something to provide him a service. He needed a transportation. He needed a vehicle. He needed a medium through which the prophecy should, could be fulfilled. Touch your neighbor and tell them God is in need of you. He needs you. He needs you. We have found in scriptures that the use of various things and various persons, amen, in ministry, they are always key. They are always central to the accomplishment of the ministry's objectives. Come on, somebody. You can't rule out things and you can't rule out people because we work with things and we work with people. Oh, you're not talking to me here. Come on, somebody. While these fans can't talk, and while this carpet can't talk and can't move, and while all of the physical things around here cannot utter a sound, yet we work with them. Come on, somebody. So do not despise things. Oh, God, help me here. And we work with people. So do not despise people. Talk to me, somebody. Jesus needed something or someone. And he said to the disciples, go over into the village. Go over there, you will find an ass and a cold tie. He said, loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say anything unto you, any man, Listen, listen to me, Mr. Baby Father. When we come to loose the baby mother, shut up your mouth. Listen, Mr. Baby Father, talking to you. When we have come with the gospel to loose the baby mother, shut up your mouth. Come on, baby mother. When we come with the gospel to loose the baby mother,
baby father, shut up your mouth. Can I preach to anybody here? Amen, somebody. When the gospel comes into the city to lose people that the Lord is in need of, let every mouth be stopped. The only thing we want to hear out of your mouth is, have your own way, Lord. Let the Lord have his way. Lift your hand and say, let the Lord have his way. Oh, praise God. Jesus made sure we told them that there are some inquisitive folks over there. There are some folks who do not understand what's happening and they will question you. You think it's a lot of, you think it's little questions a lot of you had to answer concerning Pastor Davis and this church. Out of heaven. One deacon was talking to me recently and the deacon said to me, Pastor, there's a whole lot of things we go through out there. Because some people accuse us and they tell us all kinds of stuff. Are you with me? Come on, somebody. They tell your pastor robbing your money. They tell your pastor doing this. They tell your pastor have all the girls in the church. They tell your pastor doing all kinds of things. Am I talking to somebody here? But thank God for everything. There is good and there is the, amen. There is good and there is evil. Am I talking to somebody here? Not everybody bad. Some are good. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. Those of you, when you're going through those situations, don't pay the devil any mind. The devil don't understand. He doesn't know the mission of God's church. One thing I'm glad for. I do not believe there's one person in this church who have been the worst for being a part of the body of Christ who have been the worst for being a member of this fellowship if you are there talk with me if your life mash up since you turned Christian talk to me tell me what kind of life mash up because some of them life really needed to mash up. He break up to build up. He pull down to lift up. He throw out to bring in. Talk to me here somebody. But when you come to Jesus Christ. He lift up the needy and the beggar from the dunghill. And he set him among princes. David said he brought me up also. Out of the horrible pit. Out of the Mary Clay, establish my going. Salvation is promotion. Some of you can't get no promotion in life. No care what you do. You cannot get a promotion. Come to Jesus Christ and you will get a promotion. High promotion. You'll be made a royal priesthood. Holy nation peculiar person my God if you're enjoying the message praise God the man and let me preach freely out of my soul amen so when we come to lose you give us a chance and if you are in the church and God sends a word to lose you because some people in church are still tied God help me hear this today when the preacher comes to lose you, do not rebel. Let him lose you. Huh. Come on, somebody. Whatever things you are tied to, that is not of God. Lift your hand and say, God, I must be loosed. The water we need to be loosed from whatever it is. Cut the cords. Sever the tie. Break the links. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody just wave your hands and praise him here. Come on choir. Wave your hands and praise him. I hope none of you up here don't tie up, tie up, wrap up, tie. I hope you lose from the corner of your head to the soles of your feet. 
So when you sing the songs of Zion, you are singing with something behind it. Hey, you Mushai, God of heaven, somebody praise God here. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing can lose people like the gospel. The gospel is deliverance. Somebody praise God. Hallelujah. So Lord Jesus Christ, I lose them. Because I want to show you that even those are that which you think is insignificant and cannot assist in the accomplishment of the ministry's vision. Jesus is showing us, I want to show you, don't count out anybody. Don't count out anything or you're not with me. All I need to do is to get them in my hands. All I need them to do is to surrender to me. It doesn't matter where they are coming from and who they are. Give them a chance. Bring them to me. Let me go ahead of myself in this text. Because I don't know where it's going to stop. But let me go ahead of myself. This donkey that Jesus sent for. Come on somebody. I think it's according to Luke's writing. Luke said never a man. No, Mark said so. Mark said, never a man ever sat on that donkey. Come on, somebody. In other words, it was an untrained beast. Oh, God, help me in this church today. Somebody wave your hands and praise him. Hallelujah. Mark said he was an untrained beast. And to ride an untrained beast, that could be dangerous. He was not broken in. He was not trained. He was not used to man. Sit down on him and ride him. So he could have prance and prowl and kick up and go, give all kind of trouble. But that which is in Jesus' grasp is under control. God Almighty. That which Jesus has is under control. Yeah, yo, saw you. My God, I feel the anointing on me. I would to God somebody would praise him here. Praise him. Hallelujah. Let's move back to the text. I'll get back to that. So many things have been used. God wanted to perform a great miracle. And what he found, he found Moses with a rod. Talk to me, somebody. Someone might have said to Moses, what are you traveling around with this old piece of stick? Why not throw it away? But Moses knew it was God's rod. Talk to me here, somebody. Amen! And it's only the right time, the fullness of time, for God to use it. Many people are in our churches today, and this one too. And say, nobody call upon me to do nothing. I'm just in the church. I'm not involved in this, involved in that, involved in the other. Only let me ask you to just make sure you are involved in one thing. Just make sure you're involved in the worshiping and the praising and the magnifying and the glorifying of the Almighty God. Because when you stay engaged in those kinds of activities, it's only a matter of time. Don't worry about getting on the choir. Don't worry about this or worry about that. Anywhere you are, so long as you are tuning to the Holy Ghost, when the right time comes, God will bring out Moses' rod. God will bring it to the fore. Am I talking to somebody here? God knows how to bring it. So don't, do not throw away your rod. Your rod could, amen, you, your vision could signify that rod. You, that rod, your vision, your determination, your courage to serve and to worship and to be involved. Don't you give it up. Hold on to it. It might seem that you'll never make it, but hold on to it. Lord, you're not with me here. Day, Joseph held on to his rod 
symbolically speaking and although circumstances I'll let it seem that so Joseph would never ever come forth but he held on to it he held it in the pit he held it in Potiphar's house he held it in the prison and everywhere he went it worked for him because God has a purpose in his life I mean no oh God has a purpose in your life today lift up your hand and say Lord I'm waiting on the fulfillment come on come on come on I'm waiting on the fulfillment oh glory 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 hallelujah he used Moses rod he used the boys lunch I'm saying our Lord can use whatever things that are given to him he used the boys lunch to perform a great miracle and fed a multitude what you have might not see much but you wait until Jesus get it you know I'm just thinking if I should say this maybe I could well in part Minister Davis and I were talking you know, about different preachers and how God uses different ones etc and then we made the, the remark about some persons whom you never think the Holy Ghost would use and we're referring to persons someone outside of this church and I said amen when the Holy Ghost get a hold of an individual God of heaven he just needs to get a hold of him or her and he makes the best of preacher look like foolishness or oh, you're not with me here amen somebody God can use some things and some people that you never dream could be used of God lift your hand and say that could be me oh yes yeah, some folks never think some of us could be used of God but give them a chance touch that neighbor sitting beside you amen I hope he's your friend tell your friend just give me a chance you're gonna see me after a while you don't know that some of your enemies do tell them tell them some might very well be your enemies God excuse me here some might be your enemies although they sit beside you although they sing and shout with you some might very well be your enemy tell them friends are for friends are for tell them just hold on a while my yosha has you glory to god i'm gonna feed somebody because i'm gonna give jesus my lunch i'm gonna give him my lunch and he's gonna use me to feed somebody now you god almighty I feel a touch of the Holy Ghost. Just wave your hands. Wave your hands and say thank you. Jesus, in Luke chapter 5, wanted to go over the other side of the sea. And he borrowed Simon's boat. He borrowed a boat to take him across. And when he launched out in the boat, he used that boat as a church and a pulpit he stood in that boat or he sat whatever was his posture and he spoke to the multitude that gathered on the seashore are you with me somebody needed for service that's my theme needed for service come on somebody that boat was sitting there maybe out in the shore dock up there but jesus said it can be used Come on, Simon, get it in the water. Launch it out a little, and you'll see what's going to happen. And when he launched out, the multitude gathered at the seashore, and he taught them from the boat. I don't care where you are today. You could be on the dry of the driest of land. If Jesus need you and say, come, don't tell him how dry you are. Don't tell him how long you've been sitting there. When he says, come, just arise. 
God, I want to get into somebody's spirit here today. Because some of you sing this song. I've been waiting down here at the river, Lord Jesus. Satan don't want me to cross. The devil is a liar a long time. Tell Satan you must cross. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Tell the devil I'm going across in Jesus' name. I'm going to wet my feet in the anointing. I'm going to wet my feet in the Holy Ghost. I'm coming out of dry land. Ayosaha. God Almighty, wet your feet, church of God. Wet your hands. Wet your spirit. Wet it in the Holy Ghost. Ayosaha. Come on, come on, come on. Needed for service. Why sit here idle? Boat must be in the, in the water. Come on, somebody. Jesus used it. So, Lord, you can use me. Come on, man, lift up your hand now. Yes. Can you use you, of course. Let me hasten on, the time's gone. Jesus used the boat. If God wants to bring down a giant, I'm just giving you these examples to show you what God can do, what he has done and what he will do. He needed to bring down a, a giant named Goliath. And he did not employ the services of the military, the trained army. Because a trained army and the commander in chief, the general, could not see how they could bring down that giant. But God said, I'm going to show you something. All I need is willingness and availability. I don't even talk about ability, willingness and availability. I will be their ability. I will be your ability. For it is not I who live, but it's the Christ. Lift your hand and say, it is the Christ. Oh, God of grace. Huh? Oh, Jesus. Hold on, man. Hold on. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Sometimes, you know, when, we, when certain things ought to be done, spiritually speaking, we look for those whom we know, but we know are spiritual giants. And we go for the spiritual giants. But God knows sometimes, it's not all the time, the spiritual giants can get certain job done. Because God knows sometimes when them so-called spiritual giants get the job done, they also get the praise. They also get the glory. And some take it. So sometimes for God to get all of the glory, all of the praise and the honor, he just step past them spiritual giants so-called. And look for a little nobody. God, can I preach here? Come on, somebody. He looked for a little nobody, a little untrained person. He places the anointing on them and says, Go, I am with you. My soul, yeah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Go, I am with you. There shall loom and die. Hallelujah. And when they go, they know they're not going. Amen. Harmed with theological knowledge. They are not going harmed with degrees. They are not going harmed with training and discipline of every sort. They are going saying, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw yourself from me, Lord, where shall I go? And God comes through. Lift your hand and say, anoint me, anoint me, anoint me. Anoint me, anoint me. Jesus. 
Let's finish. You are needed for service. Needed. Needed. You're not needed dead. You are needed alive. Come on, somebody. In as much as you are wanted, your name is high on the wanted list. Your name is written in bold, capital red letter on God's wanted list. Wanted alive for service. Look in the spirit and see if you don't see your name. Look, no man, look. You got spiritual eyes. Look and see. Look and see. Echo Shamalusa. Somebody's looking. Go ahead. You're still reading the list. It might be written alphabetically, so your name is way down. Keep looking. Yes, it's alphabetically. It is in chronological order. Keep looking. Wanted for service. Wanted. He sent for the donkey. He said, bring him. Oh, God, help me. Help me, help me, help me. One songwriter, we sing the song time and time again. He must have questioned, how can I be used of God? And he figured it out. He said, you know what? Take my life and let it be consecrated. Oh, you're not coming with me. Come on, somebody. My life. And then he says, take my moments. And my days, I'm going to stop using them for my own self. And, and the, the spare time, the television time, the spare time that becomes television times, comic time and, and soap opera time and sitting around neighbor's house time and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to give you those moments and those days. Are oh, you not with me? Needed for service. And then he said, take my hands. There are some things I can do around the church, Lord. Oh, there are some dusting to be done. There are such, some chairs to be removed. There's a little painting to do, Lord. There's a little sweeping up and cleaning up to do. Take my hands. Oh, you're not with me anymore. Need it for service. Lift your hand and say, need it for service. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, take my hands. There are some flowers that need to be watered. Take my hands. There are some that need to be reorganized and put in better shape. Take my hands. Yes, there are some dust around the place. Take my hands. Am I talking to a church here today? Am I talking to a church here today? There are some debris lying around the place that don't look too good, Lord. Take my hands. Oh, they leave me and gone now, Jesus. Take my hands. And then he said, take my feet. Somebody's in the hospital, Lord. They have no one to visit with them. Somebody's in the jailhouse. They have no one to visit with them. A neighbor across the street is in distress. No one to visit and talk with them. Take my feet. You see how we can be used? You're not preaching at me anymore. Because it's, it's only Bible and pulpit you want. It's only Bible and pulpit some people want to be used of God. Oh, Jesus. Pastor, give me a Bible and give me the pulpit. Give me an ordination and I'll go, Pastor. <laughs> Take my feet. Take my feet. You're not coming with me anymore. Need it for service. Take my feet. <laughs> I need to go tell somebody about you. He said, Take my lips. 
take my lips. I won't let them say things concerning you. Let them be encouraging lips, lips of, of encouragement. Let them be lips that utter words of hope and words of life. Let the conversation out of them be seasoned with salt, mixed with grace. So when I get through speaking with somebody, they'll be the better person. Take my lips. Am I preaching to anybody here? Needed for service. The hymn writer says, take my silver and my gold. Lord, there's a lot of work being done. Missionaries are all over the world. Television program, radio program, feeding program, all kinds of ministry. Amen. All kinds of buildings are being erected. Orphanage, uh, heads, hospice, and all kinds of things are being done to help humanity. I can't go. I can't do it but take my silver and my gold. Come on, somebody. Why you leave me now? Don't leave me, man. Come with me, man. Touch your neighbor and tell them, don't leave the pastor. Come with him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I can't go to Haiti, but take my silver and my gold. I can't go to Africa, but here's my silver and my gold. I can't lay two blocks on the complex, but here's my silver and my gold. I can't fix the steel. I can't mix the cement. I can't do all of them things, but here is some silver. Here is some gold. Needed for service. The hymn writer goes further to say, take my intellect, O oh God Almighty. Lord, there are various planning that goes on in the church. And you have blessed me with an intellectual mind. You have blessed me with a capacity and an ability to think, to solve problems, to make plans, to analyze things. Here is my intellect. I'll make myself available. I speak to the youth president. I speak to the men's director. I speak to the pastor. I speak to the Sunday school. I tell them there is something that I can contribute in terms of planning. You're not with me. Lift your hand and say, needed for service. I'm showing you how much we can serve. Come on, somebody. He says, take my will. Am I, am I preaching the gospel? Take my will. God, all my availability is hinged on my will. Because this stubborn will sometimes doesn't want to obey you. So take my will. Take it over, Jesus. Not as I will, but as thou wilt. Take my will. And then he says, take my heart. Because where a man's treasure is, there his heart be also. You're not with me. You're not with me. Take my heart. My heart is someplace else because that's where my treasure is. Get a hold of my heart. Take my heart. And when you get my heart sufficiently, you'll also get my treasures. Because where my treasure is, my heart will be there also. You're not with me, somebody. Why you think God can't get nothing out of some of us? Because he does not have our heart. Our heart is someplace hoovering around the treasure, wherever that treasure is. Are you still with me? And then the hymn writer said, when I get through all I can say, take myself and I will be heaven only all for thee. Lift your hand and say, take all of me, Jesus. You, know, you don't say too convincing, you know, man. God Almighty. I must say them thing with conviction. <laughs> Hallelujah. All that I am. All that I ever hope to be. I owe it all to you. Somebody praise God. Let me try to wind this thing down. So you are needed for service. The point I made earlier, going ahead of myself is that Mark says no man ever sat on that coat. The point it reinforces is that you do not necessarily have to say because I am not trained in such a discipline God cannot use me. 
Just make yourself available. Come on, somebody. He can fix us up. Has God been fixing us up? Oh, God Almighty. God can fix us up for his own use. Somebody praise God. He uses whomever is available and usable. They loose the colts. They loose the hearse. They brought him to Jesus. No resistance. No fighting. No fussing. The donkey say, here am I, my Lord. Use me. If a donkey untrained, unbroken, could submit its will, its vile nature to some extent to the Lord, why can't you? Why can't us? We all can surrender to him. Are you with me? Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8. God said, I need somebody for service. Whom shall we send? And who will go for us? What Isaiah said. Here am I. Here am I. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to be your lips. I want to be your voice. Here am I, my Lord. Lift your hand and say, send me, send me, send me. Use me, send me. God needed someone to use at a very critical juncture in the life of his people. The Jews were threatened to be killed and he needed somebody who was willing to die to save somebody's life. Oh, you're not with me here? You see why some of us will not go beyond the call of duty? Why we will stay within our narrow shores where we are in control? Is because we are afraid to die. Physically maybe. Die to the carnal nature might be. But God needed somebody. And Mordecai challenged Queen Esther. Am I preaching to anybody here? Mordecai challenged Queen Esther. Think not to yourself that you shall escape because you are in the king's house. Don't you dare to think you'll escape. You are a Jew. And anywhere you are, you are a Jew. Can I preach to anybody here? Touch your neighbor and tell them you are a Christian. And anywhere you are, you are a Christian. So that which come against Christian, it has all the right to come against you anywhere you are. Mordecai said, don't you sit at ease, Esther. Don't you think you are safe? Christians, dare you think you are safe from what's happening in Jamaica today? Oh, no. Dangerous statement, Pastor. No, not at all. You know, there's a, there's a fallacy that's among some Christians. And listen to me carefully. That some that Christians ought not to die certain kind of death. Well, you'd have to show me in the Bible where Christians are exempt from certain types of death. Oh, I know you're gonna leave me right here. Christians should never be killed by a gunman. Well, you have to show me in the Bible where it, it is written there. You're not with me, somebody. Come on, somebody. It's appointed unto man. Wants to die. Anywhere. Anyhow. The right time. No, pastor, you can't preach it that way. Well, let me comfort some of you then. I pray to God that not one Christian would ever die what we call an unfortunate untimely on them kind of death I pray to God it doesn't happen but do not rule it out it can happen come on somebody a noted evangelist a burning man of God preached the gospel until hell freeze got through a revival amen preach of a storm and one was on his way home and crashed and died on the Mandela highway some years ago you think he's gone to hell? Well, maybe you could judge that. Come on, somebody. God is God. 
So Mordecai said to Esther, don't you sit down there and think you'll escape because you're in the king's house. God needed somebody for service. And Esther looked into the message and she said within herself, I am going into the king. I'm going to offer service to my people. If I perish, oh God, am I getting anybody's heart here? I'm going to offer service for my people. If I perish, I perish. I'm going in. If I die, I die. She could have died while the others could have been spared. Because it was one rule of the king, one law, that if you're coming to him and not being called, and he refuses to stretch out that golden scepter, then they would put a black cloth over your head and lead you to the place of death. Hester knew the consequences. Oh, you're not coming at all. Esther knew the consequences, but she said, I'm needed for service when it matters most. Come on, brothers and sisters. It's when it matters most that you need to stand. Talk to me, somebody. It's when the kingdom of heaven is threatened by violence when you need to stand. That's when John stood up and said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Oh, Philip, hear me. But what happened? Yes, he was decapitated. They took off his head. But as someone rightly said, he could have saved his head and lose his soul. But he'd rather lose his head and save his soul. Which would you rather to save if it comes to the test? needed for service whatever the cost I will go in unto the king because I'm needed for such a time as this Jamaica is at a crossroads Jamaica is reeling to and fro crime and violence have become our greatest concern I believe across this nation Politicians are alarmed, and so church leaders, so the others in civil society. Everybody is wondering, where can we turn? Our Minister of National Security has been trying his best with all kinds of new initiative to bring crime and violence even to a tolerable level in as much as we should not have any at all but bring it to a tolerable level. The measures might fail because they can fail as well as they can succeed. But we know a measure. I'm sure you know it with me. We know a measure that has never failed. If my people, God's people stand indicted before the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, my hands will be free, said God. My ears would be wide open to them. Then would I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins. And I would heal their lands. I said it before. I say it again in closing today. Baton and handcuff and M16 and jail ourselves cannot control devils cannot control evil spirits cannot control demons cannot control the heart the heart is deceitful and desperate the wicked come on somebody so when a man is thrown in jail and given six years or ten years and then he's released unto society again 
He is not yet rehabilitated. True rehabilitation comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. Let the church begin to pray. Let the church begin to fast. Let the jailhouse begin to shake again like it shook in Peter's days. And the prisoners cry out, what shall we do? God Almighty, that's what we need. That's what we need. Let the houses of parliament begin to shake. Come on, somebody. Let all of the, all of the, the institutions, the penal institutions, let the church begin. Let's say the, the troubleshooters are in those places. Let's say that for argument's sake. So let's get on our knees and say, God, God, we are going to come to you in concert voice and prayer for the troubleshooting areas of this nation after we have humbled ourselves after we have turned and repented we are going to come to you for the troubleshooting heroes of this nation i guarantee you something will happen but what we do we major in the minor and the minor in the major your problem is your problem and we localize everything and we do not have a national focus why some of you not even enjoying this message we do not have a national focus because me and my family but me all right you know pastor nobody not trouble me i may have something to eat be working you know sir i may have pay me bills if the condition continues to deteriorate very soon you know of the work If the condition continues to deteriorate, my friend, very soon you won't have the work. Or even if you have work, you can't go to work. And if you have food, you can't eat it. You'll be too fearful. If you have bed, you can't sleep in there. I shall know some high. Needed, 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 needed for service. Stand with me, please. Oh, Robo Shendo Roma Sakata Robo Koshuru Mohuseti Roma Seto Robo Honta Ayamaro Satia Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. 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 Is there anyone who know that you are needed for service? Is there anyone who have seen the need to get enlisted in God's militant army? Is there anyone who has a vision beyond your local? Is there anyone who will say, I know I can make a difference. I have my lunch. I have a rod. <laughs> I'm just a donkey, but I can make a difference. I'm not much. But you can use me. <laughs> I'm not trained. But you can use me. I've not been to Bible school. But you can use me. I'm not a credential officer. But you can use me. I have no natural abilities. But you can use me. Is there anyone today? Who will get enlisted? I am a Oh God Almighty. 
I would to God you feel my heart beats. Oh! Oh! Hallelujah. I am a rosa tabaha. Shayak and Mundali say, Shayate Molusanta. I want to get signed up. I want to get enlisted. I want to make a difference. I know I can. I know I can. I will serve him because I love him. You have given life to me. I was nothing when Jesus found me. You have given the life to me. Our days and broken pieces ruin. Time I will serve you. Take my 
God right in the prayer, everybody. Come on, if God has challenged your heart with the word, if at all you understood the message of God to us, worship God right into prayer. Make another commitment. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. God lift up your hands as the Holy Ghost is ministering to lives. Hallelujah! Hey, hey, hey! My God Almighty! Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me, those who are seated in the audience. Lift up your hands in the presence of God. Raise your hand, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the challenge given to us. By the Holy Spirit through the proclamation of the word. And now Lord I commit to you. All of these hands that are raised. All of the hearts that have raised these hands. And pray that Lord you will use each one. For your glory and for your honor. They might never be a Moses. They might never be a Joshua. They might never be a Samson. They might never be a Queen Esther. But, oh, God Almighty, in your own way, in your own time, according to your own will and purpose, raise up everyone. Raise up everyone in service, in service to the King, in service to the Lord. Let there be no barrenness among us. Oh, God, but fertile soil, 
bringing forth fruits. They are 30 folds. They are 60 folds. They are 100 folds. In the name of Jesus, I speak it for them now. And I raise in my hand these documents. I raise this list with the name for prayer request. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have saved before and you are still saving. You have healed and delivered before and you are doing it again. Do so for all of these whose names are on this list and whose documents are in this, in this envelope. Oh God, magnify yourself on their behalf. Save the lost, heal the sick, reclaim the backsliders, strengthen the believers, give us a victory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Lift up your hands and give him thanks. Come on, give him thanks. Give him thanks. Some of you are not saying anything. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hands to the Lord, giving thanks for all that we receive. He is our home, our help in time of need. So we come to lift our voice in heart. 